Hey there, I'm Bill Hibbler and welcome to my social media tip of the day. Today, we're gonna to be talking about Twitter analytics. So if you're trying to find out if the time you're spending on, on Twitter is worth it, or if you're trying to demonstrate to your boss or to a client that they're getting a good return on their investment, a good ROI for the time you're spending on Twitter, Twitter analytics is gonna be your new best friend. Now, Twitter analytics is free to anyone with a Twitter account. So even if you've never accessed it, your data is already there. All you need to do is go to analytics.twitter.com and log in with your Twitter username and password. So let's take a look. And one thing I need to tell you about analytics, it is free. Um, there are a couple of requirements. Your tweets have to primarily be, currently have to be in English, French, Japanese, or Spanish. Your account has to be, and Twitter has to be 14 days old. And it can't be a private account. In other words, if you have your tweets set up to be protected, so only people you give permission to can follow you, your analytics data won't be there. Other than that, it's already set up for anyone. Now, one of the first things we wanna look at is audience. Ton of information under this tab. We're gonna go into all of it now, but I just wanna show you a couple of, of things in terms of an overview. You can see how much your audience is growing. You can see gender. You can see interests. So I'm doing, I'm tweeting primarily about marketing, social media, things like that. So I can look and see 77% of my audience is interested in marketing. I can see that I'm reaching the right audience. Gender, household income categories, net worth, occupation, consumer buying styles, even their wireless carrier, all that stuff is there. Top language, English, no surprise there. But I can scroll down and see what country. 58% of my audience is in the US, 9% in the UK, 6% Canada, break it down, et cetera. I can see what their home value are, is, uh, what region of the country they're coming from. If, if I see 10% of my audience is from California, 10 and 8% is in England, gotta work on the timing of my tweets to make sure I'm connecting with both of those audiences. So uh, we have lifestyle, political party affiliations even there, consumer behavior, a ton of information, you know, mobile footprint, all of those things are there under audiences. But most important, I want to talk about engagement. So let's go back over here. And then I'm going to click on tweets. So this is showing me data for the last 28 days. If I want to change that, I can do it as it is. We're at the 28th day of May. And so I can see specifically for May. You can also export this data to a Google or Excel spreadsheet. Let's talk about different kinds of engagement. Retweets. Retweets big. Uh, it means someone thought enough of your tweet to share it with their followers. Then we have likes. Likes are not as valuable as a retweet but it does count as engagement. Let's look at a, at a tweet here. I'm gonna, this is, this is all my different tweets. I'm gonna, I'm gonna flip this over to top tweets. So it's gonna show me my most important tweets. And this tweet got, got 9,000, excuse me. Let me show you how I got here. You click on this right here, view tweet activity. So it's gonna break it down. Impressions, almost 4,000 impressions, 138 people engaged. Uh, of that, 85 liked it, 47 retweets, that's good. Three detail expands, that means they clicked to read more. Two people clicked on a link, and one person clicked on a profile. Could be mine or the person that was mentioned in the tweet here, Devani. That was a good tweet. You can see that breakdown for every one of these tweets. Now. The third number here is engagement. So that is showing me the percentage of people, percentage of impressions. This is how many people actually engaged in the tweet. So that's what those numbers mean. So anytime someone clicks on your tweet, it's considered engagement. Retweets, likes, replies, follows, favorites, clicking on the link, if you're using Twitter cards, clicking on the card, clicking on the hashtags, uh, any embedded media, like to view a picture or a video or a blog post, if they click on a username, profile pic, or a read more link, all that counts as engagement. And again, 
more data available, uh, use that export button, which is right up here. And you can export for any date range you want and take that into Excel and get a lot more information that you can really break it down. Another important statistic is reach. Now, if, you're, if you use Facebook and you track your stats on Facebook, you know reach is already provided. Twitter doesn't provide it, but they give you everything you need to figure it out. All you got to do is divide impressions, which is this number right here, by followers, which is this number right here. And that tells you your reach. There's even a way you can, you can put the formula into the spreadsheet and have it calculated automatically. Now, why is that important? Because one of the things you should be doing is resharing your old content blog posts, different tweets, uh, videos, things like that. You can take that content that's still relevant, that got strong engagement. Like I have nearly 100,000 followers, and even that top tweet we looked at a minute ago only reached about 4,000 of them. So that means a lot of people didn't see it. But I know it's good. I know people responded very strongly to it. So I can try retweeting it at a different time of day maybe to catch that UK audience or to catch the audience in California. I can also try retweeting it on a different day, depending on what my audience responds to. And there's ways to figure that, figure that out, which we'll get into in a little bit. You're, you're gonna, when you retweet, you're gonna reach people that are new followers or for whatever reason missed it the first time. People are really not gonna get upset with seeing you retweeted content. You know, most again, most of them won't notice and they'll go back and consume that content. And you won't get as strong as a response as you got the first time. Uh, on average, about 75% of what you did. But you can go through and, and retweet that stuff a couple of different times and maximize that content. Uh, one thing about this reach rate, again, it's the number of impressions divided by your total number of followers. So that number won't be 100% accurate. It's probably why Twitter doesn't provide it. Because the impressions number probably includes users that don't follow you. How can that be? Well, if somebody else retweeted it and they don't follow you, they saw it that way, so that counts for your impressions. But if you're dividing it by number of followers, see, the number's not going to be quite accurate. Also, if you're using uh, Twitter's paid tweet promotions, your tweets are also getting people that don't follow you. So it's going to throw your numbers off, but it's still a useful stat, especially when comparing how you did one month to the next. One last thing here is you click on this events tab. You can see different events coming up and you can narrow this down by location. So if you just want to know, say, Australia, you can just see events for Australia. And you can see what these events are. You can click and find out more about them. And you can also see for the, for usually, let's go to the, to the US. Uh, you can see how many people are involved in that holiday. How many different people? 12 million. You know, how many people does that holiday affect? So you can avoid tweeting on certain holidays or more importantly, you can come up with content. If you look in advance and you see that Shark Week is coming up, you can start planning a blog post. Uh, for me, something like what Shark Week can teach you about internet marketing or some way, it's called newsjacking, to tie in to an event or something that's going on that's relevant so that people are in the mindset of thinking about the 4th of July or Miss USA or things like that and you do something relevant that ties into it, you're probably gonna get more attention. So it's a really useful thing to know. So there's a lot more data you can discover with Twitter analytics, such as things like the best days and times to tweet, the most effective hashtags, whether short or long tweets are better, and much, much more. Now, if you'd like to dig deeper, Kevon Lee, hope I got his name right, from Buffer, wrote a blog post that I highly recommend. It is packed with great tips. And there are also some formulas that you can copy and paste into your spreadsheets to make it a lot easier to analyze that data. So I highly recommend it. Just click on the link below to read it now. Now, that's all for now, but if you'd like more tips like this one, be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel and give me a thumbs up on YouTube. Thanks, we'll see you next time.